What's up, everybody? Welcome to BioS3 Raw TV. Today we got another story time. I can't believe that I didn't tell this story. I had to go back through the videos to make sure that I hadn't told this one already. Because I was like, this is such a, a big part of me and my life and what happened and who I am. Like, fuck, like, I can't believe I didn't tell this story. Now this story is going to go back to, I guess, 2000. I believe it's 2000. So, 1995, I started dating this girl. I met her actually at the bar that I used to work at. And everything was going good. We, you know, we got along. Everything went great. We wound up moving in together. We we're together for quite a while. And this is the same girl that I wound up having a drug addiction with. So, you know, although we were good in the beginning for each other and to each other, in the end, we wound up being very toxic for each other. But that's, that's going to come later on. So everything's going good. And um, we developed this, this great drug, drug habit together. Terrific, right? So at this point... In our relationship in 2000, we were on Nubane, which is a, um, a narcotic that all the body bloods were using. We were on stuff like Vicodin, drinking heavily, which is another thing. And she actually worked at a, a restaurant and she, for being like the best server of the year or whatever, she went a trip for two to Cancun. They said, hey, we're gonna go to Cancun, blah, blah, blah. She goes, I wanna take my brother. And I said, cool. My brother was kind of like this geeky little kid and you know, didn't have any friends or anything, really looked up to his big sister. I said, yeah, it's a great idea. She said, so what we'll do is, she goes, we'll, um, you know, we'll go. And since the room's already taken care of, like we got two rooms, since it's already taken care of, all you have to do is pay for a plane ticket and you're pretty much all set. And I was like, huh. I said, all right, cool. You know, that'll work. Pay for the plane ticket. We go down to Cancun. Now, before you go to Cancun, you have to make sure that you have your drugs because you're going to withdraw if you um, don't have your, your opiates, like your Nubane. So this is what's fucked up. We get on the plane, and let me preface this with, I have huge blank spots in my memory for many years. There are things that I have done that I have zero recollection of whatsoever. Um, people that I knew back then would, you know, when I got clean, they were like, dude, you said this to me, you said that. And I'm like, what the fuck? I actually had to call some of my best friends and say, look, if I ever said anything to you that was fucking weird or out of, like, I'm sorry, I don't even know what the fuck, what to say, you know? And, um, you know, we get on this plane, and the first thing we do while we're on the Nubane is start drinking. They have Coronas. So we're pounding beers on this flight to Cancun. And I had put the Nubane actually in a, an insulin um, traveling case. It looks like insulin, so I put it in there. Put the needles in there. And, and this was before 9-11, so nobody you know, even bad an eyelash at it. So I could take it to the bathroom and I could do Nubane on the plane. I could do it fucking in the airport. I could do whatever the fuck I wanted. So... I'm doing, you know, I'm all fucked up. And I do remember, like, I was fine fucking passed out on the plane for a little while. You know, I got, came to, and I mean, it wasn't like I passed out, but I took a nap. I mean, I've never really passed out or blacked out when I'm drinking. Never thrown up once from drinking. It's, you know, it's just not, not who I am. So we get to Cancun, and um, I mean, the first day we're there, we realized really quickly that you can buy any fucking drug in Cancun. This is back in 2000. Fucking things weren't regulated. Oxycontin wasn't regulated. Nubane was fucking there. You know, we were having a hard time finding in America. We went right to the pharmacy and bought Nubane. Fucking Vicodins, Xanax, Rohypnol, which is Ruf Rufinol, Ru uh, Rufi Rufies, Rohypnol, whatever the fuck it was. So all this shit is going on. And we're fucking drinking. We're popping Oxycontins. We're shooting fucking Nubane. We're whacking fucking Xanax. We're a fucking straight up mess. And I hired this guy, I told the story about him, Axel, um, at one of my story times where we got robbed for her anklet and stuff. And um, we were looking for ecstasy, and he's like, yeah, I got ecstasy. He pulls out this card of, like, punch-out things. It was fucking Rohypnol. They take Rohypnol and fight the sleep off, and they get all fucked up. So, you know, we had Rohypnol. We were doing all this fucking shit, drinking on top of it. And one morning, I wake up. An afternoon. I wake up. You know, there's shit all over the fucking room. You know, your fucking drugs, fucking, you know plates for fucking food and I walk over to the fucking thing and I'm like rubbing my head I'm like oh I need a shot of fucking Nubane and when I do this I notice so I have a fucking ring on I have a ring on now that's a whole other story but I'm like I have a fucking ring on oh it's a cool ring and I'm like wait a minute this looks like a fucking wedding ring and I'm standing there looking out the fucking window at the ocean and I'm like I look down at the table and I can't speak Spanish I can't fucking read it either but I realized there's a fucking marriage certificate sitting on the fucking table with my signature and my ex's signature on it right there on the fucking table. I'm like, what the fuck? I'm like, no, I couldn't fuck. There's no way. So I go to back to bed. I look at her hand. There's an engagement ring and a fucking ring on her hand. I'm like, so I wake up. I said, hey, I'm like, do we get fucking married? She's laughing. 
I'm like, oh my god. I'm like, I got fucking married. I don't even fucking, I don't even know I got married. What the fuck? So, you know, we go to get her brother to go out for lunch or whatever. And, you know, we're talking. I'm like, no fucking recollection. Now, by this time, I'm starting to freak the fuck out. I've already been with the girl for five years. So, what the fuck, you know? I'm starting to freak out because now I'm married. I don't remember it. So, I'm popping more fucking Oxycontin. I'm washing them down with beers. I'm fucking shooting new bane in the fucking stall at the fucking bathroom. I'm a fucking mess. Now, I guess it's not really the, the worst thing in the world. You marry your longtime girlfriend and everything's fine. But you have drug addiction together. So, things are not exactly the best of times for you guys so we get back and the first time i go to a club to meet my buddies and you know me and my ex used to go to clubs so they're like oh you know wish i said i'm you know my girl's not coming tonight and they go you mean your wife and i was like fuck like it just freaked me the fuck out i just fucking lost my shit so long story short you know we were still together about two years after that the drug addiction thing everything went fucking downhill went south and eventually we wound up you know Parting ways. Now, we got married in Mexico. Back before 2000, um, to, before 9-11, you didn't have to get married in America first and present a certificate over there. You could just get fucking married. It was no big deal. So I was like, you know what? I'm married in fucking Mexico. I'm probably never going back there again. It doesn't fucking matter. Whatever. Fast forward to 2011. I'm going on a cruise with Carrie. I'm getting a passport. Now, one of the questions you're filling out on the passport is, have you ever been married in the U.S.? And I'm like... I don't understand what this question is. Have I ever been married or married in America? What the fuck's it? Does it make a difference? And I'm sitting here going, you know, the cruise is already paid for. It's already booked and stuff. If I don't fill this thing out the right way and they fucking, you know, pull some kind of paper, some kind of weird shit and say, you were married in Mexico. They're not going to give you the passport. I can't go. It's a waste of money. I ruined the trip. I need to figure out what the fuck is going on. So I call my ex. I haven't talked to him in fucking 15, 17, 18 years, whatever the fuck, however many years it's been. And, you know, she calls me back. How's everything going? I'm, I'm good. I said, now, let me ask you a question. I said, I know we got married in Mexico, but was that legal in the U.S.? And she starts laughing on the phone. This is 2011 now, right? It was, it was like 11 years after. Yeah, it was like 11 years after fucking we went on that trip. So she goes, yeah, you don't remind, you don't remember fucking signing the paper? And I'm like, what paper? She goes, we got back. We signed a paper and filed it. And fi I'm like, oh, my God. I was so fucked up that, like, when we paid bills and shit, I would just sign shit and she would fuck. I didn't fucking pay attention to what it was because I just trusted her. I signed a fucking paper that saying that I was fucking married in America. So I'm married. I'm dating Carrie and I'm married. Right now, Carrie knew about, you know, the fact that I got married in Mexico and was all fucked up and didn't remember it. But now I got to get off this phone call and explain to my girlfriend now, who's Carrie, that I'm fucking married. She took it really well. <laughs> I got I to be 100% honest with you. She took it really well and fucking... You know, after she got past the shock and stuff, I was like, okay, well, what's the next step? Well, the next step was to get a divorce. And, um, you know, at this point, we had been separated for like, I don't know, for, uh, 10 years or something like that. And, um, you know, I didn't know what to think. I'm like, holy fuck, I'm married. Like, this is the most fucking ridiculous thing I've ever seen. So one thing leads to another. I had to get a lawyer, you know, draw the papers up, send her the paper. She said, yeah, just send me the papers. I'll sign them. No big deal. I don't want anything. It doesn't fucking matter. Sent to the paper. She signed the paper. It was probably the easiest fucking, you know, hands fucking down, easiest divorce anybody's ever had in the history of fucking mankind. And I look back and I'm like, what other shit happened to me that I don't fucking know about? There was an interview that um, I did for a wrestling interview. And the individual hit me up. and was like, hey, I don't know if you want this interview of you or not, but, you know, here it is. Here's the link. And I'm like, I don't even fucking, I, I, it's not me in the thing. He's like, no, it's you. And I'm like, no, it's not. I didn't do an interview with you. And literally there, it's on YouTube. I walk across the fucking screen and I'm like, that's me. I don't remember any of this. I sit down in the chair and he starts fucking asking me the questions for the interview. And I'm like, I'm answering them. But the way you see me here is not how I am there. Like, yeah, it's me and the fucking thing. But I have zero fucking soul whatsoever. There's no soul in me whatsoever when I'm fucking talking. And I'm answering the questions, but it's just, it's a fucked up thing. And I had like, another friend of mine you know, Dawn, who I used to train with. She was this, a fitness competitor doing the fitness routines and stuff. She was fucking awesome. She was tough. She fucking trained hard. She was always in shape, beautiful. And I always had a lot of respect for her. Like, you know, when I got clean, she contacted me and said, you know, I'm really happy to hear that you're clean and stuff. Hope you're doing well. I said, you know, did I ever fucking say anything that, you know, I, I, I don't know. And she was like, man, you used to say some shit to me when we were working out, like about my sex life and stuff. And I was like, what the fuck? Like, what the fuck got into him? I'm sitting there going, fuck. Like I, you know, I said things to people that I cared about. I fucking said things to people that fucking I shouldn't have and have fucking zero recollection of it. And to this day at 40 years old, 
you know, when I get together with old friends and stuff and acquaintances or whatever that knew me in that time, I'll ask them flat out, like, did I ever say anything that offended you? Did I ever say anything to hurt you? Did I ever do anything to hurt you? And they'll be, you know, some people are like, well, you know, this, this, this. And I'm like, fuck. Or some will say, no, why? And I have to explain to them that I was so bad that I have fucking blank spots. And I figured it out, like, is when I started combining drugs and booze and things together, I would have these, like, blackout spells where I would just function fucking properly, but not know what the fuck is going on, not have any control over what the fuck I'm saying. And then not even have any recollection of it, like it didn't even fucking happen. And unless somebody says something or I see a video of it, I don't even know the fucking shit happened. So that's the story time when I got married in fucking Mexico in 2000 and didn't even fucking know it. And you know, this, the take home from this video should be that, first of all, don't fucking do drugs. You know, don't mix drugs and alcohol. And do be a, don't, don't be fucking stupid. No stupid things. But, you know, when you do those things and you fuck up, own up to it. Fucking accept the responsibility and do whatever you have to do to make it right with the people that you care about and the things that are going on in your life. Because bottom line is, man, you know, if people hadn't been fucking telling me these things, I would have never known. We could have never cleared the air and they would have just thought I was a fucking dick for the rest of my life or just thought I was a fuck up or I was fucked up. Who knows what the fuck they would have been thinking. But these are people that were pretty close to me. So they knew something was fucked up and they just didn't know how bad it was. So be aware. Some funky shit has happened in my life. And I'm sure as I remember more of these story times and I fucking realize I haven't put them up. I'll put them up. Bouncertraining at gmail.com. Leave comments down below, but don't fight. www.bouncertraining.com is a blog. It's the No Married to Mexico bicep. Fuck, and we're out.